morning, TPSD students and parents. Welcome to Distance Learning 101 here on ABC WTVA. I'm Greg Ellis, and I am joined today by Lawndale third grade teacher Anna Beth Gates, who is also a Tupelo native. Yes, whoop whoop. Second year teacher, and today we are going to learn about text structures. Text structures, yes, sir. That's fantastic. Before we dive in, just kind of give me a definition of what that is. So, a text structure is how a text is organized. Okay. And so, we talk about five of those in third grade, and okay. so we're going to go over three of those today. Awesome. All right. Well, we're going to go right into it and uh, we hope that you will participate and join us and let's see what we can learn. All right. Okay. So the three text structures we're talking about today are compare and contrast, problem and solution, and then chronological order, which we also call sequence. Okay. And so um, I love these little anchor charts because they have the purpose of each um, text structure and then clue words that help you know. Okay. So this is, on, on a test or something, this would be a logical con connection question. Okay. So they would say, like, what is the logical connection between paragraphs three through five? And they would have to pick which text structure it was. So they got to really think here. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We are really thinking. So, um, you know, compare and contrast, you do this every day. If you're talking about your favorite team, your favorite ice cream, you're, th you're talking about what's the same about each other's ice cream or okay. what's different. And so keywords would be like, however, on the other hand, similarly, like, and unlike. So that would be compare and contrast. Okay. And then problem and solution, we do this also in math every day, or um, if I, my iPad dies, I have to go plug it up, and that's the problem, and then I plug it in and I charge it. That's the solution. So that's problem and solution, and obviously the keywords are problem, solution, resolution, but this one doesn't always have keywords in it when you're reading a paragraph that's problem and solution, so you have to really be looking for a problem and then a solution. And then the last one we're going to go over today are, is chronological order. That's a big word. Yes. But chronological order and sequence, they kind of go hand in hand. They're the same thing. And it's just when something's in order. So when okay. you get home from school, you, your mom or dad or whoever's in the car picking you up asks you, what happened at school today? And you don't say, well, I walked in the door, I turned left, I turned right, I went down the hallway. You pick the main things that happened and you tell them in the order how it happened. And we do that every day too. Um, and so the keywords would be first, next, then, last, finally. And then if they throw dates in there or years, that's also a good example of chronological order or sequence. So these are three things that we probably use all within a minute of every day. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, and it's just, and it seems hard when you're taking a test, but it's really what you do every day. Right. You just don't realize it that you're doing it. And then this um, anchor chart is in my classroom, and it's just a good way. Um, my kids see it all the time. It's just a shout out, Londell. It's just a... Um, uh, it's got the text structure, the purpose, and the clue words. So they're able to look up at that and see the clue words and then read their passage, and it helps them out. Gotcha. So when we play a game a little bit later today, I have a little mini anchor chart for you to use so that you can um, answer those questions. So you're going to make me work just like yes. uh, I had to do the other day with, what is it with you, Lawndale teacher? Mr. <laughs> Carol made me, or Miss Neely made me... Um, draw a peacock and that did not go over too well. <laughs> hey we are all about business at Lawndale. <laughs> we get it done but so anyway in the next slide i have a um, vocabulary video and these are sometimes on youtube but i've seen where some teachers are including it in their um digital classroom i mean their online classroom okay. lessons and um vocabulary is a great way to teach your kids these things because it gives it in a beat and a rhythm that they like okay. and my kids love this because they i'll sometimes catch them singing it in the hallway when we're not supposed to be talking or like in the classroom. And so you kind of don't want to get onto them because it's a good thing they're doing, but at the same time we can't be talking. So they love this. So are you saying I'm going to be humming this after? You probably so. You probably will. This, ha this has all five text structures in it. It's going to add description and it's going to add the other one. And I can't think of it right now. It's going to add um, cause and effect. Cause and effect and description will be added into this video. Great. All right, so we get to watch a little we video do. now. Oh, and I was also going to say on Google Classroom, if you press the play button, you have to press it one time and just wait. Because I think sometimes we're getting it, we're pressing it, pressing it, pressing it, and then we're like, it doesn't work. So we just press it. <laughs> For my kids at home, press it one time and just wait. It's like the elevator. You can hit the four, three button 50 yeah. times, but it, it it's going to take longer. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, so here it is. You know, much like buildings. Text, especially informational and non fiction text, have to be structured and sound, or else they'll fall over. You feel me? Yeah. Let's get it. Let's go. 
when you read informational texts you see the pattern and the way that it's written oh yes there are five main structures you can check this is now two episodes in a row we've had rap miss hamilton that uh i love it rankin had it as well she was singing it. along so feel free if you I, I won't i won't put y'all subject to that at all these people get paid the money to do that there you go <laughs> You're causing your students to listen to this and the effect that they're probably paying more attention. Yes, that's right. Look at you. See, you're learning quick. Exactly. Star student. I've been to third grade four times. <laughs> But music gives really a great way to Yes, learn. they love it. They love music in any way, and so why not include that in the classroom to teach them? This is the part they sing all the time. My eyes love the kaleidoscope patterns there. I'm drawn to that. Yes, Flow Vocabulary does a great job with their images and their sound. It's wonderful. Sometimes an author introduces a problem and then explains how somebody solved it. The tower leads more with each passing century. The tilt increase to more than five. Some kids get tired of how often I play these songs for them. But I tell them, I'm like, it's going to get in your brain and you'll never forget it. You'll be in college one day singing um, description all day, all day, and you won't even realize that it was from third grade. At least a little bit. That's problem and solution, not a riddle, kid. Just look out for the words involved. Since question, problem, solution, and solve. I got another text you don't have to ask. And it's text structure, compare and contrast. It explains how things are different and the same with the words in bold I'm about to say. Both the tower of Pisa's construction and the Washington Monument saw destruction. The Washington Monument, named after George, had construction pause for the Civil War. Like the Leaning Tower, it took years to finish, but the purposes of the buildings were different. One was erected as a church bell's tower, while the other honored a founding. So it's showing those keywords that help you know right. that it's comparing the contrast. That's five text structures in a sixteenth of an hour. In text, I find description, I find sequence, cause and effects. We can compare and contrast all day, all day. There's a problem and solution, I bet. In text, I find description, I find sequence, cause and effects. We can compare and contrast all day, all day. There's a problem and solution, I bet. So we use that what we just learned about to, to answer questions and passages. That's awesome. I've been blessed to be at both of those um, towers and uh, oh, wow. the effect of climbing uh, the Leaning Tower w is exhaustion yeah. <laughs> because you, you're actually leaning when you're going really? in the all the way around. Wow, yeah. wow, wow, wow. Um, so we're going to put what we just learned about in all three of these anchor charts and then this one that kind of helped you and then our video to answer some questions from a text. Okay. Now for time's sake, I'm not going to read all this to you, okay. but I'll point this out to you. When you are... Um, answering questions about logical connection and you know that it's text structure, you're going to look at things like the, the title. So if I look at the title right now, it's talking about butterflies and moths. Okay. So I know, well, this is two things that they're, that they're probably going to talk about in the passage. So it's maybe compare and contrast, but I'm not sure. And we always have to read the whole passage, but Miss Kate isn't going to do that right now for time. But let's read the introduction. It says, both butterflies and moths have a four-stage life cycle, egg, larva, which is a caterpillar, pupa and adult. So I know it's still talking about both of those things, but I want to skip, I want, I want to show you, I want to skip down to the third paragraph. Okay. Now in um, third grade ELA at Lawndale, we number our paragraphs, and I think everywhere does, but we number our paragraphs so that we can find our text-based evidence. And so um, we're going to look at the third paragraph and it starts with on the other hand. Now, if I go back to the compare and contrast, that was one of, your words. That was one of the keywords on the other hand. And so if I'm reading it, I realize, on the other hand, most moth caterpillars don't form a chrysalis. Instead, they spin a protective case of silk threads around themselves. So if I was just using the keywords and the title, I would know that this was? 
Compare and contrast. Compare and contrast. Very good. Now, I want you to read the whole, par the whole passage, but for time's sake, we're going to do this. And then on your um, Google Classroom, on the slides, when you have to just enter your um, answer, just erase what's in that box and type in, and I wrote up here a word bank, and so um, you would just type in compare and contrast. And so when they do this, is, are you able to see, to know what if they got it right? Yes, that's okay. the beauty of Google Classroom, is that I'm able to respond to them. If okay. they got it wrong, I can make a little note down here okay. that says, you know, you missed this one, try again, return it to them, and they can comment back too. What type of interaction are you getting with your students? Are they responding well? Have you seen... It's, obviously, it's not like the classroom, right. but considering the circumstances, are you pleased with the interaction you're getting with your students and parents? Yes, they are doing a great job. Um, it's a learning curve for all of us, right? but um, they, um, they are. They're doing a great job. Some awesome. of them are really excelling. Great, great. Okay, well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to dive into what? We're going to play a little game. Oh, boy, we're going to play a little game. We're going to see your basketball skills. There you go. <laughs> all right, we'll be right back. This is Distance Learning 101. Welcome back to our final 11 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> as you can see, we've got um, a few props back yes, here. Yes, we do. And uh, while the sports world came to a halt, we're going to kind of revive it yes, a little bit. Yes, give this you morning. a little bit of something to root for. There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right, so kind of explain what we got going on yes. here. Yes. In and what we're going to do. Okay, so um, I love basketball, and so I try to incorporate things I love into the classroom, and the kids do too. And so this is just a fun way to review anything. You can review math this way, um, any kind of question. You can put A, B, and C instead of problem, solution, um, compare and contrast in chronological order. But all you need is three buckets, cups, anything that you can toss something into. Okay. And label it somehow. That's just paper and, pen, and tape. And then you can eat it. You can... If you have balls around the house to use, you can use those, but you can just crumple up paper. Okay. So I'm going to have you crumple up a piece of paper. I'm going to crumple up one, and we're going to use these as our tools. Our basketballs. Our basketballs, cool. that's right. And in the classroom, we don't waste these. These go in a bucket, and we keep using them over and over again. <laughs> okay, so here's how you're going to do it. I'm going to read you the passage. It's a short passage. Okay. You're going to use the anchor chart that I've put up there for you, using okay. the keywords and the purposes, and then you're going to... Throw the basketball into which basket you think is the right answer. Okay. At the end, we'll see if you're right or wrong. Okay. Okay? All right. So the first paragraph is this. To yeah, probably you do. You got your, <laughs> you got loose. We need a little uh, start and line up music, don't <laughs> we? Go. Some flashlights. Okay. Okay, here's the passage. Hello to all you bakers out there. Thank you for tuning in to today's segment of Baking with Love. That may be your next segment. Baking with Love. <laughs> today's topic is... Deals with frosting the perfect cupcake. Put your apron on, wash your hands, wash your hands, and get ready to get your bake on. First, fill the pastry bag with icing of your choice. Next, point the tip of the pastry bag on the outer edge of the cupcake. Then, squeeze the pastry bag while holding one hand near the tip and the other hand on the pastry bag. I think you got it? Go, go for it. Hey, <laughs> all right, we'll see if you're right. It kind of goes with the Michael Jordan week that we're having on here. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay, here's the next one for you. Muffins and cupcakes share many similarities. However, there are a few characteristics that set pastries apart. You know it already? I think it's going to be comparing. Okay, you can go ahead. All right, good. Two for two. Two for two. Well, we don't know yet. we got to check. <laughs> don't get too cocky over there. <laughs> Have you ever tried to eat a cupcake and while peeling the liner off, much of the cupcake gets peeled off with it? As a cupcake pro, which I am a cupcake pro, as a cupcake pro, the biggest tip I can offer is to avoid the cupcake catastrophe is to remove the cupcakes from the tin as soon as they come out of the oven. Sometimes if they are left in the tin, steam builds up from the hot cupcakes and the moisture can, may make the liners pull away. If that doesn't work, try a different type of cupcake liner like a grease proof. These tips will ensure that you sa you get to savor every last bite of your yummy cupcake. All I can think of is now I want a cupcake. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to say you, there was a problem. Yep. Um, to me, that's not a problem. I just picked it up off the floor. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I had the 25 second rule at my house. I love it. But you gave me a solution. Yes. So I'm going to go. Oh, uh, I got you. I got your rebound. You got a rebound. Second chance shots. Okay, so we're going to check and see. So the, on the first one was the one that we t that had the um, keywords first, next, last. 
And so you were right, that was chronological order. Now a little tip on your Google Classroom, when you're dragging and dropping, some kids just wanna click it and move it, and sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes you have to click it and go to the top of that line and get those four arrows, and then it will drag to your correct answer. Look at there, the yeah, magic of technology. I'm telling you. All right, so you were right about that one, chronological order. Number two, this one used um, the keyword similarities, however, so that was a good clue that it was compare and contrast, so you got that one right. And also, if, you're, if your answer's over here, that is okay, as long as we know that you know what this paragraph is talking about. All right, and then the last one you said was problem and solution, and that was right, and it didn't have a lot of keywords in it, but it did have the word catastrophe. Now, catastrophe is similar to a major problem, and so um, <laughs> catastrophe was how you knew it was problem and solution. Right. And so um, at, that's, that's how you do it. So you scored all three points. Move on to the second round of the tournament. That's right. right. <laughs> that's right. A little March Madness without the, mad without the madness. <laughs> Just the cooking. That's right. That's right. All right, and so another tip that um, I wanted to share with y'all about how to make some stuff at home that's not so fun fun okay. is Flashlight Friday. Oh, okay. We do this in third grade at Lawndale, and um, Kathy Palmer, actually, shout out Kathy Palmer, actually shared this with me last year, okay. and we used it last year, and they loved it, so we used it again this year. And um, so all you have to do, all you need is a book, a flashlight of some kind, and a dark room. And so what we do is we turn off all the lights. I even sometimes put like a fireplace scene on the bulletin board, I mean on the Promethean board. And we will, I'm sorry, the new line boards. And we will um, read like this. So we turn off all the lights. You get the, each, each child gets a flashlight in their book and they read by flashlight. Cool. And so there's thus flashlight Friday. Thus <laughs> flashlight Friday. Um, and so it helps them to read for enjoyment because it makes them, um, it gives them something different to do. Right. And um, so it's good for just spicing up reading time where it allows children to focus solely on the book they're reading. Because gotcha. there's so many distractions this day and age. There are. And again, it, doing the same thing over and over sometimes can get boring for mm -hmm. them. So anything that's different from them, it's going to grab their attention yes. pretty quick. Yes, yes, yes. And so it's just plain fun. And then here's just some pictures of the kids in my room doing Flashlight Friday. All right, we'll give your kids a shout out. Who we got? Okay, we got in the chair over here, we got Jamarcus Shaw. He has shown so much, so much growth this year, by the way. Way to go, Jamarcus. That's right, Jamarcus. And then Brooklyn over here, she is reading and she's doing a phenomenal job. She's a really good helper. And then Kennedy's in the middle and she, um, she is also a very good helper and has shown tremendous growth, growth this year. And then this down here, um, I think, I can't tell, I think that is, um, I can't really tell because it's the back of somebody's head. Got you. Well, if you don't know, then I'm certainly yeah. going to be able to help you there. <laughs> I think I just went around there and snapping, and I don't remember who was sitting right there that day. But they, um, they love it. They beg for it. And sometimes we can't do it, and they're like, but Ms. Kate, we really want to do Flashlight Friday. And so it's really good to keep them motivated to get done with their work. All right, parents, you've been challenged. That's right. Um, and you don't have to do it on Friday, but since yeah. today's going to be Friday, why That's true. Not? Go ahead and do it. Exactly. And they can use anything. They can, they, some of them do homework by it. Okay. I have some parents who will, when they're tired of homework, uh -huh. they'll do flashlight homework and it's fun. Well, let's do this. Let's have our parents, let's have your kids do this. Take pictures of them. Yes. And hashtag it. Flashlight Friday. Flashlight Friday, exactly. I think that'd be great. We would love and to see we'll them. Retweet it. And yes. See how it goes. I, and especially you, Miss Kate's kids, you know you need to be doing that. Exactly. Hashtag Flashlight Friday. That's your big assignment. That's today. that's your assignment for today. Flashlight Friday. All right. So from here, um, and, and they can actually while they're reading, they can kind of do your, yes. your text structures at the same yes. time. Yes, and this activity, like I said, can be done with anything. You can do it with, um, what we've also done with this is I've put A, B, and C instead of like the text structures. Okay. And when they answer a multiple, uh, multiple choice question, they will, I'll come over to their team and they'll decide together and then they will toss their answer into A, B, or C, whichever gotcha. one's right. And gotcha. they, they love that too. Well, we only have a few minutes left, so okay. I want to talk a little bit about from your standpoint as a, unless you have another mm -hmm. assignment from your standpoint as a teacher how important is to have parent involvement right now since there is no sh no real structure structure right at, at home without the classroom yes oh it's so important and um, i'm so thankful for the parents that we have at Lawndale. they are really on top of it and you know they're very good about um 
sending me questions and I love to be able to answer those for them because we're here for them. Right. That's what we're here for because because they are doing something totally new and unless you're a teacher, you kind of are like, what? You know, what right. to do? And even some teachers that have to do it. So it's very good that they're able to, and I love that they're able to comment on their, their um, Google Classroom and ask me questions when they right. need it. It's really good to see that and to see that the parents are working so hard. They are working so hard. And it's, no, you're not going to be perfect. And we don't expect you to be perfect. Well, they're not perfect when they're at school either. No, I mean, it's it's no, 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 no. And so y'all are doing a great job. I know that you don't feel it sometimes, but parents, you are doing a phenomenal job at doing these things. So let me ask you, let me ask you this question. Um, are you finding that you have some students who maybe aren't as interactive in the classroom that kind of come out of their shell? Yes, on especially I had a Google Meet with the kids the other day. We had a scavenger hunt on our Google Meet. And some of the kids that really don't talk out in class uh -huh. were like almost yelling at me. And I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> you have a voice that's outside of a speaking voice? That's awesome. And so it is really good to see them flourish in this. And they actually will also comment back things to me. And, and I'm learning more about some of them on Google Classroom with their writing than that? I knew about them in the classroom. So it's really been good. Well, awesome. Well, Ms. Cates, thank you for your dedication to your yes. students. Coming up with creative ways to keep them entertained. And this is a difficult time it is. for everybody, but everybody seems to have been embracing this yes. distance learning concept. Yes, I think so. And I think that, that we've, we've all just had to buckle down and realize we've just got to figure it out. And so I think, and Tupelo has done a phenomenal job at preparing us and helping us with things that we need awesome. and being there for us for technical support, emotional support. <laughs> and little did you know how you were going to need all this four months ago. <laughs> that is true, true, true. All righty. Well, thank you so much thank for joining you. us thank and you. playing some basketball. That's lessons. right. That was a lot of fun. Good, 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 good. All right. Well, thank you again. Thank you. And uh, for ABC WTVA and the Tupelo Public School District, I'm Greg Ellis. Have a great day.